last night you had a comedy show in Jones. I did. Is yes. that the first time that you've ever done anything like that? It's uh, the first time I've ever done anything like that to that scale. Trial and error, mm -hmm. you know, figuring out what's funny, what's not funny. Making sure it's structured well helped a lot, and then I, it kind of came together. I wish I would have driven eight and a half hours to see this show. Realistically, probably wouldn't have been the smartest decision, but if I would have known how diverse Adler's comedy special was going to be, it would have been worth the experience. I didn't realize how many segments were going to be present, which made the comedy special even better. I was expecting a normal Netflix-esque stand-up special, but ended up being surprised in ways that I never even thought to consider. Even before watching this, I ended up getting surprised in a very interesting way. I was so excited that I was actually DMing Adler about when it officially dropped. He not only responded with the date, but he went so far as to send me the video early so that way I could analyze it sooner. And I'm so glad he did, because this did not disappoint. One person I may disappoint, however, is you, since there is no way I can dissect this work without talking about specifics, which could ruin your first experiences slash expectations slash excitements about this comedy special. This 46 minute special is hilarious, and is a true testament to when you focus all of your creative energy on one thing to make it the best that it can be. If you go in blind, it's well worth the time. Isn't that right, Kyle? It was pretty good. I think there's some sort of visual aspect I might be missing here, you know, going in blind. No, but in all seriousness, Adler's doing a lot of different techniques here. I wasn't super familiar with Adler's comedy style or anything like that when I started watching the special. I'd only seen maybe one video six months ago, but I used to watch a lot of stand-up and I've seen a lot of different things done in stand-up. And I think as a stand-up comedian, he's already off to a great start. I'm personally a big fan of Bo Burnham and I can see him channeling that a little bit here. Bo was also a YouTuber, he started on YouTube, and so he used editing in the video version of his special to improve the stand-up, and I think Adler does the same thing. It's a good showcase of his talent. After I watched the special, I browsed through a few more of his other videos. From watching some of his vines and seeing some of those jokes translated into the special, it's clear that he's come a long way with comedic timing and that sort of thing. I think I'm definitely going to stick around and see more of his content in the future. I think for a YouTube stand-up special, it's really well edited. There were some obvious points where I noticed like a hard, jarring cut. But, but for the most part, the comedy was pretty good. I think there's quite a ways to go, but it's an excellent start. I definitely want to see more. I'm going to go do the, the bird box thing. All right. Ethan, back to you. Usually, most stand-up routines have one, maybe two segments. The first would be a short clip of the comedian doing something, most of the time not on a stage. The second would be the actual stand-up comedy part. Adler's comedy special on the other hand, has about 14 different segments. Each segment has its own little flair, and some even have the same format as others. For example, three of these segments are videos. One of these is at the beginning. It was a great intro segment, especially since I died laughing 10 seconds in. Okay, Google, play some royalty-free music. Playing royalty free, just to stream on Spotify. Never have I ever laughed at a comedy intro skit before. So it was nice to see that the very beginning wasn't stale and actually contributed to the later portions. The side swipes at the house were also a nice touch instead of just raw cuts. The second part was the warm up. This included cliche jokes on some note cards. Have you ever found yourself uh, chopping onions and then you're like profusely crying and then. However, Adler gave an original twist on them. You realize you're not chopping onions, you're just existing. <laughs> Initially, the note cards on stage made me a little bit anxious that he was going to forget his lines. Regardless, it was a very funny session. Once Adler put away the note cards, he started telling some jokes that any stand up comedian could tell. Found out the other day that Panda Express knows what they're doing with their life more than I do. These were life observations with hand gestures to sell the joke. More specifically, the topic was focused on a few mission statements from some well loved eating and beverage establishments. They have a Panda Express mission statement. The Panda mission is to provide exceptional Asian dining experiences where people are in inspired to better their lives. <laughs> I, who's going to Pan Express to better their life? At this point, I thought this was going to be the entirety of the show, since that's what most stand-up specials tend to be. I was very soon disproven by a musical number about insecurities. <laughs> Everybody's insecure to a certain degree. The song itself was pretty great, especially since it played off the fears of the people in the audience in a funny yet playful way without the intention of offending. Just laugh them away. 
The other aspect was that most of the songs sounded happy, but as it progressed, the deep insecurity started rising to the top. You're all alone in your head and will be until you are dead. And completely contrasted to the previous mood. <laughs> Even though I knew Adler did music, I never thought that he would implement it into his comedy show. But I really shouldn't have been surprised, especially since half the show relies on surprises. The magician who hates his job. Such as magic, which is not only a callback to when he used to do magic, this is my absolute favorite segment of the show. Due to the self-awareness of it. I'm not real. This isn't my real voice. It's a voice recording. The stale expression on his face no matter what happens in contrast to how the audience reacts. This short rope represents how much I love my life. And how he mostly relies on gestures with a mocking tone, even though he's not even talking. I will take these three ropes and make them the same size, because I know you've all been dying to see that happen. Another thing that relies on gestures without talking is automatism. And it's basically where you uh, paint or you write without letting the conscious mind take control. This very obscure practice made it on stage in the form of a YouTuber who's anxious about culinary cravings while simultaneously having a mental breakdown. I found it humorous due to the fact that I kept Chili's. ridiculously Chili's. jumping Chili's. back to Chili's. a core Chili's. theme. Chili's. The next situation was back to some note card jokes. I've stopped watching sunsets so I can finally scroll through Instagram without any spoilers. Except this time around, I noticed a difference. There were a few occasions where Adler spoke a possible edgy setup. What do you call an unorthodox Jew? And the crowd went silent. However, the very next second, he would conclude his thought with a non edgy punchline. Jewish which released the tension. This not only showed that he was testing the waters of his comedy by grazing the audience after the words left his mouth, but also proved that the joke landed despite the crowd's mind racing with anticipation, which made me really glad he took the risk. At this point in the show, the subtle transitions become more apparent. If you didn't notice it, good. That's the whole point of a seamless transition. It connects two points in a way that isn't jarring or out of place. Kind of like when the interviewer asks Adler what his five-year plan is. Where do you see yourself in five years, Adler? Or when Adler exclaims, Job interviews, am I right? Right after we see him trying to get a job. Or when Adler goes from telling jokes to blowing up an exercise ball. Hello? Perfect transition, Adler. Oh. Not to mention that this entire part right here has good dialogue, keeps up with the comedy, and furthers the story while integrating a little lesson. All I'm saying is if you hold on to this attitude of letting life happen to you, then you're not going to have any say in who you become as a person. So this next song is on guitar. Despite its simplistic nature, it confirms the setup in a comedic way and surprises the audience. Surprise pops right back up when Adler sets down the guitar and serenades us quite literally with an Italian opera. I would imagine that this experience would be totally different live, since on the playback there's subtitles to show that he's singing about nonsense. I'm not entirely sure how it was implemented on stage since I didn't drive the eight and a half hours, but I'm sure the sheer act of singing on stage in a different language contrasted to his own was rather amusing. Uh, is this a comedy show? Indeed it is, Adler. Indeed it is. I have a few characters. Which are a beatboxer with asthma, <laughs> An unnecessarily violent librarian. Just make sure you take them back on time, or else I'll break every single one of your toes, okay? A choking mime. A happy gas station employee. Hi! An escape artist who can't escape problems. Janet, I miss the kids. I miss you. Elephants. 
and a radio announcer. You're listening to one bit of the three, gonna sort of a thing, a swat of the day, last sort of day to. Each of these are humorous by their individual quirks, especially when exceeding the audience's expectations. The impressions themselves, or what Adler adds afterwards, are generally the two roles that play heavy in the segment. A few of them are simpler than others, but because Adler set up the segment with longer form impressions, the shorter ones surprise you since you're expecting more, which adds to the comedy. After this hilarious segment to the show, Adler pulls up a chair and starts winding it down with a Dr. Seuss-esque poem. In this, Adler gives a retrospective about his creative journey. There once was a boy who sat in his room, talking to nothing, most would assume. Although there was some unexpected one-liners. Five years later, a lot has changed. I used to make awkward jokes in music, and now I... Uh, but looking back, here's what I'd say. It was definitely the most serious part of the show. It helped tie everything together by calling back the five-year plan line in a way that connects the dots. And you know what'll really show them? Go and write a stupid poem about how you're sitting right here, man. This, right now, it's your five-year plan. making you certain that a lot of hard work, dedication, and planning went into this performance. To see that it was worth the many months, or maybe even years, that went into planning and writing this passion project. We conclude the story on stage with the final video segment. Yeah. I'll definitely have to get her two barbecue pizzas next time. This final piece of the puzzle helps tie the strong knot in the story, both by cementing the message of the short film that was implemented. I can't just sit around letting myself become a product of my own circumstances. And by revealing that this is all connected. Where do you see yourself in five years, Adler? Being silly. I see myself being silly. I absolutely love this ending, due to not only the fact that it maintains the self-aware humor, I have an inspirational montage to continue. But especially since it brings a whole new perspective the second time you watch it. Job interviews, am I right? I, in fact, watched it a second time, and while I still found it to be funny, there were two things that I noticed, besides the fact that the beginning is connected to the end and vice versa. During the intro segment, at 25 seconds in, Adler picks up a sticky note that says, Buy Cactus. First time watching it, I had no clue what that meant. The second time, I know that the cactus is going to appear in the second video. The other was that I never fully understood the order of events until after watching the entire thing. I thought for sure it was a linear story. In the beginning, I thought he went from his dorm straight to the interview, since that's the order the comedy special arranges it in. However, we can tell that he's wearing different clothes, which shows that these are two different instances. In order of the comedy special, dorm, car, interview, stand-up, dorm, party, Park, stand up, bench, street, interview, stand up. This is the wrong order for the storyline. The correct order would be dorm, car, dorm, park, bench, street, interview, stand up. It's presented with the flow of the first for a variety of reasons. First is so that way you get a glimpse of the story every once in a while. Next, it gives the second viewer a different approach when watching it again. And last of all, the way the storyline is edited, it transitions very smoothly. All in all, Adler's comedy special was an overall fun experience. I really appreciate that it wasn't just a normal stand-up special and actually had some variety, as well as the amount of videos that were connected to this project. I enjoyed that there was a hidden storyline behind it, which wasn't really revealed until later in the special. I appreciate that he let me see it early, despite me taking longer than I previously hoped. And I appreciate that Adler is not only a great guy, but created a fantastic comedy special.